What's going on, everybody? This is this is what we be doing. The customer needed some wire running this in his shed. You know, nothing too extravagant. Give y'all a little tip on codes. You can wire a whole shed up by yourself and put whatever, whatever you want in that shed, okay? And then when it gets out there, outside at the corner of your shed or wherever you're stubbing out at, you put a plug. And when you put that plug in there, it makes it a temporary connection. That way, the, if the inspector, city inspector, somebody inspector comes out here, the inspector told me that once. He told me to just put a plug on it. Got a ceiling fan going here. Receptacle. Receptacle. She don't have too many receptacles. That's a switch. This is a, 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 a for a light. That's, it's got about it's got about four receptacles in here, and we're running it uh, underground in electrical PVC. So. I'll show you what works good for a transfer machine. It saws all your roots up, cuts you a little trench to however wide you need it. Because, in my opinion, I don't want to be digging a hole that's out of the size of a shovel. And then have to cover that hole back up. It's a heck of a lot more digging when you can just dig, cut your trench, cut the roots and everything, and then take it. It's really easy. You, know, you just carve it out there. And you go about half a foot down there. You know, it depends on the application. There ain't nobody gonna be driving out here. Nothing gonna be driving across it. Nothing be. So it's gonna be okay. Be about eight inches down. But anyway. Time to get back to work. <laughs> Necessity is the mother of invention. Even if it's a redneck invention, it still works. <laughs> See y'all later. Come on, son. It's okay. I know you're confused. Sometimes it's confusing to me to wonder what all that mess is. But I know what it all is. We'll get it all together. You just got... If you let it confuse you, it can confuse you. You just got to keep in mind, switches are to break a circuit, and plugs are hot all the time. So, when you're running hot wires, you're just running power from one plug to another, and it's they're all white and black hookups. Sometimes your switches is going to use a, a white wire for a switch leg. If you've got power running to your, to your uh, light up there, and you just need to break the circuit, you're going to be using one of your white wires coming down to this switch as a, as, as a wire that to turn, you know, to break the circuit. But we didn't run none of ours like that, so everything's basically cut and dry. Uh, white to white and black to black, and then, the, you know, the, the ones that are running up to, to your light, that's the one you break circuits with. So this is, this, is, this is our hot all the time for our light switches. So I put two pigtails on here for this box for two light switches. So we're good on this one. And then you tie all your grounds together. But anyway. Take all these and twist them together. These don't got to be long at all. But you take, it, take them all and twist them all together and leave one, one of them long to uh, tie into the, to the ground for the I'll tell you what, just hang this wire, and we got to run this wire over here to, to another light, and then she needs two wires run to the ceiling fan. Uh, well, I 
It took us about an hour to dig this trench with that sawzall about eight inches deep. Gotta get back on it. Yeah, what's going on, YouTube? Well, I guess uh, I guess you turned out okay. We got teak blood over here. Now I'll tell you this, fellas, if if you ever running your own wires, man, run them things neat, you know. Like even when you gotta group them together, you know. Make it make it to where you can look from across the room if you're looking, and you can see, okay, this wire is running on the bottom one, and the bottom one runs over to here. And if you're having to chase down some wires, you, you want to know what plugs to hook them to later on when you run your wires. If you if you got your wires all jumbled up and just thrown on the wall and nailed up there in the old how and just squiggly everywhere, when when you go to hook in your plugs and your switches and your wires, especially over here with this area. I could look to see where those wires were coming from just by standing over here on this end of the building and looking that away. I could tell that okay, that wire's the bottom wire. That's the main hot line in. So I need to have that over here and then branch off of it for all my other switches. So that's just an example. Another thing is if you're doing work and it looks nice. When other people look at this work, they're gonna like it. Even if it's behind a wall, this was not going to be exposed behind the wall. Otherwise, I would have, if it was behind the wall, I would have popped my holes on each side of studs and, and then ran them through the holes. But even at that, you know, uh, secure your wire. And I'll give you a little point of advice on this one. Not only do these staples secure the wire, but by code, you're supposed to have a staple so far from the box. Because that way, if the wires ever start getting hot in the system, it burns out right at the first staple. If it ever catches the fire, it's going to burn itself out right there. That's 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 a that's a safety thing also as well as can just for looks. Got the ceiling fan going on. The ceiling fan's got one light switch for the light and one light switch for the. You know, lots of places don't have that. You got one switch for both, and I put, put two switches on there for each one. And then we got one light switch for there, and this last one is the light switch for the outside light. I went ahead and stubbed one one outdoor breaker GFI on that wall right there for for her Christmas lights. If you ever try to pick up the Christmas lights, all in all, I'm kind of impressed. You know, we we had a one hell of a time digging this hole, man. I mean, it takes a lot out of you. My, my son was young. It must have took us a. Uh, it made it easier by using that sawzall, but you get on so that you know you get you get down so far. Sometimes you hit a rock, and then you got to use the pickaxe, man. Break out the old-fashioned way, but we had to bring it, branch it off from here at the main. And we put a 50 amp breaker on it and use some eight gauge wire. And, you know that'll handle it. And then we took it over. Had to had to go under all them rocks, and then along the building over there. He's gonna move this trailer house sooner or later, so he didn't want nothing to where we could not easily disattach it. Because he's gonna build him a house here. He can call me back whenever uh, he got his house ready. What's up, son? We're almost done, huh? Okay. Well, I tell you, what's it gonna take for you to quit being camera shy, man? This is an awesome video, man. I guarantee you, when they see this, they're gonna be shocked. Limpy, Limpy knows more than what we thought he did. You're gonna be proud of this video, dude. This is a, this is some serious. I went to school to learn how to do this, man. Body work, something how I learned to do, you know, through the years on my own and recently by other people. But this is what I went to school for. Anyway, I guess he's he just wants to get this damn thing finished so we can go on down the road, man. I'll see y'all later. Till next time, Lamster out.